Hello dear students, welcome to the lecture 2 of uh, Responsive Web Design with ASP.NET 5 and MVC Pattern and Bootstrap. Okay, so uh, today we will continue from the previous week. Uh, I will copy and paste the code of the previous week and so we will have uh, each one as separated folders. Okay, and I will make this as lecture 2. Okay, uh, so I'm opening my uh, solution from the Solution Explorer. If you have any questions regarding the course, please uh, contact me uh, from Discord anytime. Uh, Discord is fully working right now. You can find the uh, Discord link on our GitHub page here or under the each video course video here. Uh, I think. Okay, here and the GitHub repository is here. Okay. Okay, so it is open. It, it is writing as lecture one, but this is uh, lecture two. Let's just uh, rename it. Okay, and I wonder if we can rename this one as well. Okay, here, ne rename, I will rename this to Okay, so where we have left I think uh, Where we have left is We have Put that somewhere if I remember. Okay, we have left here. So I am opening that page uh, to continue. Okay, uh, we will continue with the uh, basic uh, razor syntax. Uh, we already have idea about uh, uh, razor syntax, I think. Uh, we have seen this page, so let's check it out. Okay, yes, yes, we have made the examples. Uh, so this was the basic syntax of the razor pages. Yeah, you see, we are, we are able to access the uh, server side uh, variables with at uh, letter in front of the uh, parameter name. Or we can open and close server side uh, coding like this. And even inside server side coding, we can write HTML like this. It is automatically uh, understanding the HTML tags. And uh, we can also uh, write raw output like this because by default, the output we are putting on our page is encoded and encoded means that they won't get parsed as HTML. Okay, and this is the uh, commenting. Okay, so let's continue with the next page uh, of the tutorial. Okay, variables. Just like in regular c -sharp code, you can define variables in Razor to store information for later use. If you are already inside a code scope, e.g. inside an if statement or another control structure, you can just define it straight away. If you're inside of a markup scope, you can use a Razor code block, as described in a previous article, to define your variable inside. Okay. Here's an example. Okay, so this is a 
Cold scope as we can see. Okay. Uh, so let's say here under this scope uh, we are inside a cold scope. Therefore we can define variables like this. Like we are writing a, a C sharp code in the code behind. Okay. Sorry. Okay. And then uh, if we are not inside cold scope, what can we do? Uh, let's see. Okay, we have to define them inside code scope or they have to be defined in our model. I think there is no other way. So this is the uh, model reference that we are getting from uh, lecture one models movie. By the way, the namespace is not rename it uh, let's see if we can rename namespace as well so okay here's the namespace and when we save it i wonder will it rename them oh they are not yeah this may cause a problem mm. okay i will just convert it back Okay, I can find all uh, lecture one and rename, but I won't uh, spend time with that. So let's continue. So this is how we define and access variables. So I will write some uh, HTML, HR, and another HR. So if you wonder what is HR, uh, the HR element represents a paragraph level thematic break e.g. a skin change in a story or a transition to another topic within a section of a reference book and when we click learn more it is opening the main specification of html and there is examples but these examples are not visible Okay, anyway, uh, you will see that. So I will define a new variable inside the code block. So to open a code block, I put add character and curly brackets, open and close. Now I am inside the code block. So I can write C sharp code as usual. So I will define a variable. Let's this time let's define a string list. Okay. Uh, let's say list of names one moment i have to pause okay so list of names and let's put some names okay such as Thoros university mersin and school okay now i can access this inside html tags or uh, inside another code snippet so um, let's access them inside some html tags such as span okay and how am i going to access it is like this first index then inside a div okay and inside the div let's access as something like this so you see how inconvenient it is to write let me check something oh not inconvenient i think convenient i have said the uh, yeah you see how it is convenient uh, how it is easy to use um uh, the razor sign text like this I can also write it as a code snippet let me show you so here we will do the uh, opposite of uh, writing them as above here I am going to do a for each loop and here I will write simple HTML code this was not possible inside uh, web forms in the older version of or let's say the other version of ASP.NET based web programming 
However, it is possible here. So uh, what I'm going to do is simply let's combine some more. Uh, let's open an unordered or ordered list. Yeah, this is ordered list. Okay. You see how uh, conveniently I can write. And here I will write each element like this. Okay, item. And to item, I think it should work like this. Yeah. You see how convenient it is, how easy to write, clean. Uh, it is really good, I can say. When compared to uh, older, uh, or let's say, uh, the other version of ASP.NET programming. So we can mix server-side code and uh, HTML code as we want. Uh, with cleanness, readability, and such. Okay, okay, so, oh, oh, our, for each loop is not working as we wanted, okay, uh, Toros and Mersin is uh, printed uh, as we wanted our HR tags, okay, however, here, these are seen as, hmm, these are seen as uh, regular text because they are under HTML. Therefore, I ha I will put an add character here. And I will put add character here. Yeah, now it should work. Okay, now you see they are colored differently. And uh, now I can see it is uh, uh, displayed as a local variable. Okay, so now let's run it again. Okay, it is working as expected. It is working uh, with uh, great uh, efficiency. I mean, when you are doing coding, this is a great way of uh, coding with efficiency, cleanness, readable code, manageable code. Okay, so this is what we have shown. This is also what we have shown. Okay. So, when you have opened a code snippet, if you are writing a uh, server-side code uh, or, yeah, server-side code, we may say, or variable-defined code inside HTML tags, then you have to let the uh, compiler know that which one of them is text or which one of them is a uh, uh, variable. For example, uh, now that inside here, I can also something write like this. Something. So this something will be text and this will be variable. Okay, you will see that. Okay, let's go to next. Uh, part and yeah you see something is printed as text okay so if statements when defining the markup for your views it's extremely useful to define a conditional statement which decides whether or not a portion of the view is interpreted and rendered the most common conditional statement is the if statement and you can use one of these in your razor code pretty much like you would in regular c sharp code just prefix the keyword with the razor operator at and you're good to go the if statement here's an example of a simple if statement with razor remember that this can be included directly in your views alongside with regular html Okay, so let's uh, make example of that. By the way, I will remove uh, this alert message uh, to not uh, see it every time when we run the application. Okay, where was the alert? Alert is here. 
so I just need to comment this out okay okay and here if date time now year equal to 2042 this span will be printed this is uh, a regular c-sharp code and let's make it also as 2021 so we can see which one of them is working and which one of them not okay okay As you can see, it's just C sharp mixed with HTML. You should be aware of two things though. First of all, in regular C sharp, I could have skipped the curly braces because there's only one line of code markup as the condition. This is not allowed in Razor though, no matter how many lines follows your control structures, they have to be surrounded by a set of curly braces. Second of all, notice how I switch directly from C sharp into markup. This is possible because the parser can easily understand the difference between HTML tags and C# -sharp code. On the other hand, if I had just written a line of text without any HTML tags, the parser would have been confused. For cases like that, you can use the less than text greater than tags as described in the previous article. Okay, so there are two key points here, and before we delve into that, you see our code is working. It is here. Uh, what are the two key uh, points here? It is that the parser can easily understand difference between HTML tags and the C# -sharp code. This is very important because of that we are able to write like this and this. And uh, if we don't put any uh, HTML tags, then the parser get confused. So what does this mean? This means okay so i have put something like this it is not inside any html tags under uh, the code snippet code block or let's say so you see now the uh, compiler is telling me that something is wrong or the intelligence we can say because it cannot find variables name is like name it like this and they are not inside any html tag therefore it cannot understand it the difference this is just a text i just want to write a text and to write just a text i put a text uh, uh, tag like this and now whatever inside text will be uh, uh, evaluated as simple text not uh, as a as a variable or uh, object or something and we will see how it is printed on the screen okay you, you see it is here this means that uh, it is on the same line because we didn't use any uh, new line having uh, html tag so there is spawn and by default the spawn is display in line okay uh, i think we can see it here you see display inline spans uh, have display inline future and therefore uh, there is no new line after span and therefore it is coming at uh, just after the span itself i could have changed this behavior something like this uh, display i can say um, inline block not inline block okay i need to say as a block here so after block it will uh, move to the next line so you see i can i am able to define uh, display uh, style as well with this uh, normally string uh, character uh, this was a really uh, painful to write in uh, regular web forms. You see now it is uh, starting at the new line because 
When you set display block, display block, it takes the entire line like this. So this is display block and this is uh, also display block as you can see. Oh, actually this is display list item. So display list item is uh, like this. Uh, this is div, therefore it is display block. And this is span, therefore it is uh, display inline. But it is not. Okay, here I think I, we can see the computers. Okay, block. And this is display list item. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, see the if else statement. You see how it is convenient, easy to write if else as well. Something like this. It is so simple, so clean. Uh, writing this code inside uh, old web forms was extremely painful. Uh, we had to put a lot of uh, server side parser opening and closing like this okay uh, in the previous lecture I have shown you that so it is simple clean and convenient okay let's continue okay loops looping is an extremely useful programming technique which you can also benefit a lot from in your razor code Looping allows you to repeat an action and or output for a specific amount of iterations, for instance to output items in a list, as we'll see in the examples of this article. There are several types of loops in c -sharp and they are all available in your Razor code. Let's go through all of them, using the same, very simple data source, a list of names, which we'll turn into an unordered HTML list. Okay, here uh, we are defining, uh, by the way, before going to that, let's put some uh, break and uh, HR, thematic break, okay. So, you see my code is currently not formatted. To format it, I click Ctrl, K and D at the same time. One moment. Okay, there's something correct. Control K and Control F. Ah, okay. So, uh, I got confused. Control key was pressed, you see here. And now it is telling me that waiting for a second. K of court. And then I will hit Control F. Not Control F. Okay, one moment. Oh, Control E and Control E. This is the uh, correct one. Control D and Control E. Interesting. Why it is not working? It is not the correct combination anymore. Control K D. Yeah, this is the correct one. Hmm. Oh, it has put so many empty lines for some reason. So I will just do Control Z to get fix it. Okay, auto format is not working as expected right now. I don't know why, but I would expect it to format this something like this. Okay, anyway, the shortcut is Control K and plus D, this one. Okay, so let's return to our topic. So we have defined a list uh, variable 
and initialized it with these uh, names, obviously. And then uh, we can use uh, loop. I had already made it example here. Now they have used an ordered list. Uh, but this is a for loop. Yes, let's write a for loop as well. You can use any loops. It is same as uh, C sharp like this or uh, do while loop like this. So you see there is a counter uh, variable defined here. Actually, I could define a counter here as well. And since they are in the same uh, level, what is the level? Uh, the level is the uh, I mean the same level. So this is in the level zero. This code scope. This is also in uh, level zero, and this is also in level zero. Since they are in the same level of hierarchy, you can access this uh, variable at here as well. So when we run the application, we will see they are all working. Now we can do do while as well. So let's uh, change a bit to understand. What I am going to do is I will write some uh, text here. Okay, since this is uh, not this area is not under any text, I can uh, I mean under any code snippet I can write like this. Um, following is a for loop. And here, uh, following is, or oh, it has automatically formatted, uh, as you have seen, it was here and it put it here automatically. Uh, this is while loop. And uh, this is, hold on, is the while loop. Okay, so what is the difference between while and do while? The difference is that uh, with do while, uh, even if this condition is not met, it will print one time. Okay, and with, with the condition checking here, uh, let's say you have the uh, list uh, of five items. And if your counter is uh, five, these will not be executed. However, here it will be executed, then the check will be made here, then it will terminate. Okay. Okay, so this plus plus will be also executed after uh, getting the index, I believe. Uh, what this means is uh, so first it will get the zero based uh, the first uh, index of the name list then it will increase it so this is executed after this counter variable is used inside uh, get method of the list okay so when we run it you will understand it these are all about writing c sharp code the plus plus is always executed after the value of the uh, increased uh, variable is read okay okay so you see they are all generating the same output this is for loop this is while loop and this is do while loop uh, it, uh, you can also see this behavior like this okay i will put a breakpoint here and here and uh, here okay so let's uh, restart the application I will try to explain you the uh, order of the code execution actually this is something that I teach in the first year but no harm okay first the integer i is defined inside uh, for loop this will be only executed the first time when the for loop is starting then it will be ignored 
then it will check the condition the condition is checked the i is zero therefore the condition is met it is smaller than number of uh, elements in the names list it is five okay this part is executed and when it is going out of scope of the for loop this will be executed and it will increase the i by one then it will recheck the condition if it is meeting it will continue to loop if it is not it will terminate let's continue to while uh, okay here it will first check the condition the counter is zero again because we have defined the counter here and then uh, it will first read the first element uh, of the uh, list because and then it will increase it if i step into oh it didn't show me okay here we can see but from the behavior we can understand that first the value of the counter is read here then this plus plus is executed okay it is not like increase the counter one and then get the element of the index uh, get the element of the names list it is first uh, read counter it is zero in the first loop get the element uh, in the names list the first one then increase counter it is same here okay let's uh, continue and then there is break continue so it is working same as C sharp code or any programming languages okay here we are doing a for loop we are printing the names uh, list eat item so it, it is zero one two three if the counter is bigger than two or bigger than bigger or equal to two then uh, we put another line and we break this will break the loop uh, parent loop okay so first uh, what we are going to see is we will see uh, the first three elements then uh, this line and then it will be ended okay let's continue okay first three elements and then it is ended okay then uh, okay we can move to next uh, part of the tutorial okay this switch uh, statement it is no different we previously used if statements in our razor code to control code flow but they are not the only conditional statements available when you write your razor code an alternative exists in the form of the switch statement you may already know it from c sharp or other programming languages but in this article we'll see how you can use it in your razor code a switch statement works by defining a condition to evaluate and then one or several possible outcomes of this condition. So for instance, if we have a user specified number in a variable and we want various outcomes depending on what it is, it could look like this with a switch statement. Okay, so let's make an example of a switch uh, statement. So when I write something like this, it won't work, of course. So what I need to do is I need to make this switch statement uh as a uh, server side code then i need a variable name it as number but i don't have it anywhere so what i'm going to do is i will even uh, make this even bigger something like this here you see it is it is automatically formatted i see in the razor code it is automatically formatted okay then uh, i will make a loop of 100 and each time uh, whenever the number uh, or let's say for each case of number i can write something so if a number is one i will write number is one oh, I, I want to show you something
Okay, would this work? No, because it is still uh, treating this line as a, a server side code. However, it is not, or let's say C sharp code. So I have to put it inside a HTML tag or text tag. Uh, so let's make, put it inside div, which is HTML tag, and it will automatically understand that. Okay. Now, uh, you see now if the case is it will write as it like this and here it will write like this I can put any anything inside uh, the uh, cases so when I run the application now we will see uh, switch is extremely useful if you have uh, many conditions to check uh, so do not use if else or if 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 switch is uh, the way you should uh, prefer in such cases a razor switch statement looks just like it does in c-sharp but with an important difference you can include html directly inside your case blocks allowing you to easily output markup and text for each case also unless you are already inside a razor code block you will need to prefix the switch keyword with an at character just like we have seen in previous examples Here's a complete switch example. Okay, so our, as you can see, uh, current switch uh, code block is working as expected. And I will copy and paste this one as well. So let's write it. It is automatically uh, formatted. So it will take the number of the day or day of the week from the date time now. It will be my uh, local time based. And if it is Monday, let's write as it is Monday, Saturday, Sunday, and default. Default means that if not any of these cases is satisfied, the default will happen. Currently, we are we don't have a Wednesday, therefore uh, we will get into default. These are all regular C sharp programming, but no harm to be. Uh, seeing them, learning them again. So meanwhile, let's move to next. And you see nothing, nothing special about this day, as you can see. Alright, so the local functions. In a previous article, we talked about how Razor allows you to define a block of code inside your views, like this. Okay, we are still inside a view uh, also. You see index C, S, H, T, M, L. By the way, when I do auto format with uh, control K, D, it puts some empty lines. I think it is due to uh, my comments. So I am just deleting them. Okay. You can use these code blocks for pretty much anything that C Sharp can do, you can even define local functions. This is really cool, because a local Razor function allows you to include markup, which makes it possible to create small template functions. This is useful in a number of situations, for instance as we can see in this next example, where we need to generate the same piece of markup multiple times. Defining a local function is just like defining a class method, except a local function doesn't have an access modifier, public, private, etc. Here's how it could look. Okay, so it has list web users. Okay, so I will uh, define a local function and call it. It says model list. Okay, they didn't include the code behind of uh, Hello World and Mr. World models web user. Uh, therefore, uh, I will use uh, my, I will generate my own model so you will understand it as well one second okay okay so when i copy and paste this code it won't work because we don't have 
uh, a class as hello mvc world modus web user therefore first i will define a class class web uh, user and inside this class we will have uh, public property as uh, first name okay i can also define fields such as uh, last name the difference of fields and properties i explained them in my uh, object oriented programming and advanced programming uh, lec uh, lectures courses so you can watch them on our uh, uh, youtube channel so here it will take parameter of web user and then it has birthday this is probably a uh, date time so uh, birthday by the way i will assign this by default date time now i can also define it at the moment of uh, initializing and installs of web user okay here it is working it has a user class user info so let's put some styling on it such as okay uh, let's add a font color from here let's pick brown okay here and it has a list of uh, web users so what i need to do is i need to uh, compose uh, an object list of web users so how am i going to do it simply list web users and i will name it as my web users as new web users okay and inside uh, this list i will compose each one of the web user instances something like this okay so the birthday will be equal to such as new date time and let's generate some uh, birthdays okay 2000 okay 12 one and then first name as uh, let's put uh, some classic in name last name as okay and let's continue another web user as this time i will leave out the birthday it will be daytime now and first name equal to and the last name equal to uh let's say something like this and another one as let's define a birthday for this one and let's say eight twelve or let's say three five okay first name as uh let's see and the last name as let's say i don't know if there's such last name <laughs> probably there are okay so and we have to put this okay uh, do we put expected uh, it is expected because i think we have to yeah this will be like this no no not like this this like this it is okay what is wrong with my okay okay now no errors yes we have defined our uh, web user list 
and it will now for each uh, the my web user list with order by however as you can see this is throwing an error why because our code scope uh, is not ended yet why then it is giving an error let's see Invalid token for each in class report struct interface member declaration. Interesting, why? Okay, we are inside the code and it is ending here. We have for each, it calls the render user info. We have uh, HTML here. So what is not uh, working? Email token for each in class record struct or interface member declaration. Hmm. Maybe it is because of This one, it has to be in a different name. Alright, users. And it will be type of web users. Okay, in my web users. Okay, in my web users, which is here. It has order by. Okay. Why? Hmm. Okay. Okay, we have defined class here because we have defined a variable here and we have defined a method here now like we can define okay this is working but why for each not working let's check the error uh, it says that CS fifteen nineteen. Okay, let's see. So we have a compiler error, and why is maybe happening? okay because this doesn't exist here and now it says that my web users does not exist in the current context But it it should be exist. Why? Maybe we have to define it as 
public let's try okay no we need to define as public can we access this as Okay, it still says it doesn't exist. Maybe I need to make this public. Let's remove this and see what happens. Let's remove this as well. We are still inside code block. Okay, so what is causing that it doesn't exist? Interesting. So invalid token for each in class record struct or interface number declaration. This is the first time I am getting such error. So it is related to probably our compiler. What I'm going to do is simply uh, I will end uh, the uh, code snippet here. Then I will make them separate uh, code and I will remove this. Now let's see what happens. Okay, and uh, okay. Mm. What is the problem? switch whatever so we have an unclosed yeah yeah do you know why because you see uh, no we have closed it we have closed them and let's remove this and let's see if it is working or maybe we have a problem somewhere else. <coughs> so let's see the errors. Okay, we have model. Yeah, we have a parentheses error somewhere. But where? says that it is expected by on this automatic generation okay so we have error somewhere but we need to find it it says that 
the color bracket is expected here okay we have switch we have switch here it says case break case break case break okay it is related to this code if we remove this let's see if it's working if we remove this as well let's remove this too okay now compile so so what we are going to do is uh, let's leave this class definition definition okay so it was about our uh, class declaration uh, our class declaration is causing error So it was our uh, problem. <coughs> hmm. Okay, so it appears that we are we cannot define uh, a class inside a resort page. So it was our problem. Uh, therefore, we have to define this class inside our model. Also, it, it, is, it is making sense. You should not define your classes in Razor. Uh, you should define them in your uh, model. That is why we have uh, uh, MVC, model controller view. Okay, I have... Uh, moved my uh, class here then uh, this will be in my uh, model dot uh, actually here how am i going to access it I think I will access it in as uh, models. Hmm. Oh, I cannot access it directly like this. Why? because we are returning movie class and this is another class therefore to i if i want to access it uh, i have to define it like this and then i can access it with um, okay how can i access it Model, model name. Hmm. Okay, model dot release a title. Hmm. I think I have to add the reference as
control of the model and the view Maybe something like this. Okay, using uh, lecture one models dot yeah. Here I will make it as like this web users, so it will be available. Uh, lecture one. Uh, models mm. I'll make it something like this yeah let's let's check it out now. and here okay now it is visible okay so we have solved the problem now it shows that you see lecture one models web user class and i have defined a local function here and now it will work okay so the first case will be ordered by this is a uh, link queue uh, x means each element inside the class x dot first name and this is by default a scanning order for sorted by first name and then the second name i think i can also sort them by their birth date as well last name and okay we have one extra character here yeah okay and then uh, user sorted by birth date okay okay sorted a scanning by the way okay now uh, as you can see I am able to call my local method however uh, it turns out that we are not able to define local classes I uh, probably let me check it out uh, nesting classes inside class no not that one actually this is also against the idea of mvc so you should not use it okay so user sorted by ascending uh, by uh, first name uh, demirci ayşe güçlü hale boyacı mehmet okay and sorted by last name boyacı mehmet demirci ayşe you see they are ascending order güçlü hale and they are sorted by uh, date yeah it appears that my uh, example was perfect case for sorting Okay, and let's see. All right. Okay, we have seen the local um, functions as well, methods. Okay, templated delegates. Templated delegates. The templated delegates functionality in Razor allows you to define a piece of markup and then have it used to represent a specific object on the page. This is a great tool when you need to represent e.g. one of your classes in multiple places inside of your view.
It can also be a great way to separate a large chunk of markup from the logic of your view which can make it easier to read and maintain large views. When defining a templated delegate, you will be using a func delegate, it could look like this. Okay, uh, so there is an example function dynamic object movie template. Uh, by the way, this is a delegate, and uh, then it uses div for formatting, item.title, and then this is text because it is inside div, and then item release date to short date time string, and this is also text inside div. Okay, let's continue reading. In this first half, before the equal sign, I create the movie template delegate. In the second part, I specify the markup template to be used. Notice that I use a variable called item, it's passed into the delegate and the type is dynamic, meaning that I can access members on it, e.g. title, which are not checked at compile time. Instead, they are validated at runtime, where they are expected to exist on the object passed to the delegate, if not, an exception will be thrown. I intend on passing in objects of the type movie, a simple class we used previously in this tutorial. Okay, so uh, this is not controlled at the compile time, therefore you should, you have to be careful if you are using runtime checkings. Okay, so uh, I think we define it inside code block. Yeah, we have to define it inside code block. So this is our already model. And now we can use it inside uh, delegate. Okay, so how different it is from a local methods? Let's see it. Okay, uh, we've data title. So by the way, you see we've data title assigns our title. Uh, you can also use it, or we are able to write it like this. We will see about we've data later, I believe. Okay, so by the way, V data is the data that is coming from the model, probably. Yeah, yeah, this is about the uh, data that is coming from model. So I will try to print it on the screen like this. Okay, one moment. And here I will open a div or let's say h1. Okay, view data title equal to div data title. We also have view back and let's see what they are. So view data. Guess or sex sets the dictionary for view data and view back. So what is the difference between view back and view data? Okay, it is already asked previously. To transfer data from controller to view, view data is nothing but a dictionary of objects and it's accessible by string sk. View data is a property controlled on Okay, so uh, view data versus view bag. View data and view bag are used for the same purpose to transfer data from controller to view. View data is nothing but a dictionary of objects and it is accessible by string as key. View data is a property of controller that exposes an instance of the view data dictionary class. View bag is very similar to view data. View bag is a dynamic property, dynamic keyword which is introduced in .NET Framework 4.0. View bag is able to set and get value dynamically and able to add any number of additional fields without converting it to strongly typed. 
View bag is just a wrapper around the view data. Okay, so there are some examples. So this is controller code, action results. Okay, so uh, let's add example of our uh, view data and view bag. So here we add it to our controller such as uh, list through student and we assign it to our uh, view data as uh, with the keyword student and it adds a list of string reference to the student and then there is a view back example i will do the same okay you see uh, with the view back we are assigning it as dynamic so it will be solved at the result at the runtime and this is as uh, this is sim similar to session, uh, you know, with keywords. However, we are adding an uh, object here. Then we can uh, use them in our view, such as, okay, uh, you see this is older code, uh, not the case anymore with Razor. Okay, so here uh, the key point is uh, we define its type with S. Okay, in the wave data. And we don't need this anymore because uh, we, can, we are using Razor and therefore it is much uh, better in syntax and convenience. Okay, and for view back, uh, let's see. Student, I think it's the same. Oh, we don't even need to say student. Okay, one moment. Okay, it doesn't come, but we can directly say it's student like this. Okay, so uh, this will be, let's put a div. View data and you back okay let's run the code so you see these are this is fully dynamic and this is working as uh, a dictionary in both cases, they are not uh, checked at the run uh, at the compile time, and they will be uh, controlled at the runtime. So, if an error happens, it will be un uh, catch it uncaught. Okay, students in view data and students in view they are wo both working. Uh, are there any other difference? There is also temp data. It is another thing. Let's read also about that. Temp data is a dictionary which is derived from temp data dictionary class. Temp data is stored data just like live session for short time. Temp data keeps data for the time of HTTP request, which means that it holds data between two consecutive requests. Temp data helps us to transfer data between controllers or between actions. Temp data internally use session variables. Note that temp data is only work during the current and subsequent request. It is generally used to store one-time messages. With the help of the temp data keep method we can keep value in temp data object after request completion. Hmm. So I wouldn't suggest you to use uh, temp data uh if you are not sure 
Okay, so that is the uh, versus comparison. View data. It is key value dictionary collection. It is type object and it is key value dictionary collection. And view data is the dictionary object and its property of controller base class. View back is dynamic property of controller base class. Okay, view data is faster than view back. View back is slower than view data. Oh, <coughs> so you see view data is faster. View data introduced introduce with MVC1, MVC3, MVC1. Weave data also works with .NET Framework 3.5. Weave back only works for above. Type conversion code is required while enumerating. In depth, Weave back is used with dynamics, so there is no need to type conversion. Oh. However, if you use type conversion, uh, that is uh, that would be easier for other coders to read your code. Uh, its value becomes null if redirection has occurred. Same as view data. It lies only during the current request. Same as view data. Okay. So. Uh, now we can move to next okay before moving to next uh, chapter uh, let's see what we have let's uh, write uh, what we have seen uh, so far in this lecture too okay in-depth learning of Razor syntax okay and let's materialize it okay you see as I did uh, control K D uh, it did add some empty uh, lines this is certain a bug in Visual Studio. Okay. Okay, we have started from here. And let's write them. How to define uh, variables in views. So the uh, extension of view is CS HTML, C sharp HTML, something like that and how to write uh, mix it html and uh, c sharp code in views okay what else and let's check from our code uh, how to write how to do how to write or how to use how to use for each if else uh, for while switch okay okay what else in a uh, razor uh in views okay uh how to how to use a custom defined class in a model and Uh, by referencing model uh, this can be applied to anything actually it doesn't have to be in under models uh, I can just add another class uh, such as let's add a class and let's call them as uh, global 
Glasses. Okay. You see it is under namespace lecture one. I can also delete it and I can say as public class my or let's say custom uh, global class and uh, inside it I will have uh, integers as I are rank and a method such as uh, public void return rank okay I will make this by the way private and then it will return uh, something like this okay public integer by the way we didn't return the rank but let's it on the rank and as as public void set rank and I rank and this will set rank with if condition as equal to rank and something like this okay whatever it's not important and uh, now uh, we can also use this inside our index CS HTML with using by the way it is not under uh, namespace therefore I can edit exactly as I think global classes yeah it is working Oh. Um. oh I am not able to reference it because it is not a static class therefore probably I can access it directly let's just check it out it is not under anywhere as well so I will open a code block and yeah it is directly available my global class equal to new global classes and here I will type it as style and font size okay let's turn it to pixels and here I will call my global classes okay uh, the method is not available because I have to use the custom classes okay custom global class object and it will be reference it like this wow okay let's name it as gc class okay and here now i can set and get okay i did set something like this and um okay this is a method call therefore does it work okay it doesn't work because it is expecting um, a value to write inside div therefore i will uh, set it here and then i will get it okay get I read return rank okay so now this should work okay let's run it okay how to uh, compose custom classes 
این ال اس به داد نت اوکی اون دیسی فور اپلیکیشن اند یوتیلایز دام این سایت ریفز اوکی I think it's a good explanation. And yeah, it is zero. Due to pop, due to method, we have a uh, rhythm. I can also change it to uh, return something. So yeah, this will return always. Okay, uh, zero now. It will return the um, remaining of uh, dividing by five thousand. And what else we have seen so far is okay. Uh, how to define local methods. methods and use them uh, how to define uh, dynamic function or let's say method method templates and use them inside weaves okay here so this is our delegate function you see uh, functions and methods are same but in C sharp they are called as method usually and therefore I am using method uh, what is the difference between or well, let's say we data and we've back uh, what is the difference between weave data and weave back how to use weave data and weave back to transfer data from uh, controller to the weave okay okay it is working as expected and all right these are the things so far we have seen so we can move to the next uh, chapter by the way this is template delegates and okay uh, about the uh, template so you see this is a template uh, it is like a local method that is formatting and returning uh, some data uh, so here uh, we are using that template to uh, write output as we wanted so the output will be inside div the title so it is expecting uh, a title uh, by in the runtime it is not checking at compile time so if i make it something like this it will still compile however it will throw an error and like this this is about formatting so the item is being the item be, uh, getting provided to the template the template is taking an object and it is dynamic so here this is the object we are providing and it is getting the object's uh, title uh, I, I mean utilizing and the term. I could also write this as a method so let's also write it as a local method so it will work same and uh, let's name it as boy uh, sitting uh, format movie it will take this time it will be a uh, uh, strong, strong uh, 
uh, formatted so it will take a type of movie object movie my movie and it will return um, this simply it will return this however when we are returning we will use my movie dot title Uh, so the title is not string. No, it, no, it is string. Okay, so what is the error here? It says that. Can I call it on very good string? Okay, it is expecting from us uh, explicit conversions, therefore I will do it. Okay, so the movie has title and release date. So inside div, we are referencing our local object oh i see i see so when we say return string it says can therefore i will make it as return object and now can it return as object no hmm, i see so this is why i have to add additional formatting so if we do, if we write it as um, method, we uh, it is not working as a template. That is why we use uh, dynamic uh, delegates. So what I can do at best is return this as a string, and to make it work, I have to. Uh, return it like this so basically i have read i am not writing a, a html mixed code i am writing uh, the previous uh, way this is not the html uh, mixed code anymore uh, this is the string and it will be needed to parse it as uh, like this let me show you uh, method way of movies so let's put it inside div here I will call uh, a movie uh, format movie you see it is private uh, because it shows uh, a lock here it will take movie object and it will return uh, this string however it will be encoded by default so let's say default encoded let's see the difference and here's uh, Ralph so to have it raw i have to use html raw method like this okay all right so let's run the application okay so when we are using default encoded you are, you see it is printed as uh, a string a text 
therefore it is not HTML uh, formatted. The format is not working. However, when we use as HTML raw, you see it is printed as we wanted. Okay. Okay, so delegate templates. Printing easily HTML formatted data. Yeah. This way it is more explanative and okay this is this is the everything now you see the difference between method and uh, dynamic delegate template templated delegate by the way templated and okay so we can move to the next uh, chapter I will take a pause here okay uh, now we are starting to see controllers in more depth so introduction to controllers in the beginning of this tutorial, we briefly talked about controllers in the MVC pattern and we even added one to our project, to see what it looks like and what it does, to get you quickly up and running. In this chapter, we'll go more in depth with the topic of controllers, starting in this article, where we'll go over the core concepts of a controller. Okay, so what is a controller? As mentioned in the start of this tutorial, the controller acts as the middleman, it will combine your model with a view and serve the result to the end user. However, neither a model nor a view is required, the controller can act on its own for the most basic operations, e.g. delivering a simple text message or redirecting the user to somewhere else. We'll discuss this in the later article on action results. Uh, so you see you can do simple operations uh, with a controller however uh, what we are targeting is an advanced application a web application in asp.net mvc a controller is just like any other class so it has a cs file extension or vb if you use visual basic and looks like any other .NET class However, there are a few things that will allow you and the .NET framework to recognize it as an MVC controller. Okay, so by default, it is not recognized as an MVC controller. So uh, there are a few things that will let us to define it as an MVC controller. It's usually placed in a folder called controllers in the root of your project it inherits from Microsoft, ASP.NET Core, MVC, controller, or from one of your own classes which then inherits the Microsoft, ASP.NET Core, MVC, controller class. The name of the class will usually end with the word controller, e.g. home controller, or products controller. Okay, these are, these may not be necessary, however, then that would require you to do extra things. So you should uh, follow the uh, coding patterns in uh, MVC especially. So when we check our controller, we can see that it is inheriting controller class from Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC controller. So this is not just a uh, regular class. It is a uh, uh, children of a controller class. It is inheriting it. If you don't follow these conventions, the .NET framework will not be able to recognize your class as a controller, so it makes sense to follow them. However, if you insist on e.g. naming your controller classes differently, you can decorate it with a controller attribute placed right before the class declaration. So you see, if you change the name of your controller, then you need to decorate it with controller attribute. 
but I don't suggest that. By inheriting the Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC controller class, you get some added functionality that you can use for MVC purposes, e.g. the ability to return views, partial views. It also allows your controller class to access HTTP-related information like the query string, thanks to the HTTP context property on the controller class. In other words, it turns a regular .NET class into a web-aware class, allowing you to do stuff you would normally be able to do in your PHP or ASP classic file or any of the many other web technologies out there. So, if you are uh, writing a class for as a controller of a view, then you should inherit uh, always the controller class of Microsoft Azure.NET Core MVC. Okay, so where the controllers are placed, are, they are in, placed inside controller uh, folder and they are uh, ending with a controller word as a suffix. Uh, so this is about how controllers are defined and named. Let's move to the next. Okay, then the actions are coming. So in our uh, controller, we already have an action, which is I action result index. So when our application is running, basically it is looking for an action, name it as index by default. Okay, it is how it is working. So we can define multiple actions, multiple uh, actions, and they will be added as an uh, as uh suffix to the url you will see we will see about that so let's continue since a controller is just a regular .NET class it can have fields properties and methods especially the methods of a controller class are interesting because they are the connection between the browser and therefore the user and your application for that reason, the methods of a controller class is referred to as actions, a method usually corresponds to an action in your application, which then returns something to the browser, user. Okay, this is uh, an extremely convenient feature uh, that does not exist in the uh, ASP.NET web forms, uh, or as far as I know in other applications. Uh, I don't know, I'm not sure about that though. Uh, so uh, this is a great feature uh, and we will see that so this is important it is a they are connection between the browser and the user and your application since a browser works by calling a url you need something that translates urls to a corresponding controller and action method for instance, the browser might request a URL like products1 and then you want your products controller to handle this request with a method action called details. This is done with the concept of routing, something we'll talk much more about elsewhere in this tutorial, but for now, just know that routing is what connects URLs to actions on your controllers. Okay, and let's continue. When creating your controllers, keep in mind that all public methods on a controller class is considered an action. This means that if you have defined catch-all routing rules for your controller, and that is a common thing to do, all the methods on your controller class can in theory be reached using a URL. So if you have methods on your controller that you don't want the end user to be able to call, be sure to mark it as private. As an alternative, if you really need a method to be public but not accessible by URL, you can mark the method with the non-action attribute. Okay, so this is important. Whatever I write here as a public can be accessed uh, with URL. And to prevent it, I, may, I have to make it as private or uh, mark it as non-action attribute with non-action attribute. This is important. Keep that in mind. So you have written a hidden uh, method here. However, it can be discovered, found uh, with malicious uh, users and can be abused against you. Uh, therefore, always keep in mind that every user can be malicious. Okay, can be a hacker. Action verbs. To gain more control of how your actions are called, you can decorate them with the so-called action verbs. These are in fact regular .NET attributes, which will tell the .NET framework how an action can be accessed. 
Without these attributes, an action can be accessed using all possible HTTP methods. The most common ones are get and post, but you can change that pretty easily. Okay, so uh, this action can be accessed with only HTTP get. Therefore, you won't be able to access this uh, uh, method with post method or other things. This defines that. Now the edit action can only be accessed with a get request. This has the added benefit of allowing you to have multiple methods with the same name, as long as they don't accept the same request method. So for instance, you could have two methods called edit, the first one would be available for get requests and generate the form for editing an item, while the second one would only be available for post requests and be used to update the item when the form was posted back to the server. It could look like this. So you see, this is HTTP get, this is HTTP post. When you get, it will return the form. When you post with the same name, it will update the item uh, on the, uh, let's say, server or whatever you want to do. Okay. So maybe we can start with making example of this to understand it better so inside our home controller i will define an edit and edit will return view however um, i will set um, a different title and release date for this one By the way, I have to copy this and that uh, to make our index HTML work. And let's say editing window will be the title and date is 2000. And on the post, post will not, oh, post will also return, but it will return this time product updated. So it will take a product instead of that. Um, I think I will just return a sitting text um, product updated with text and the text we post will be written. okay so to access this i will just append edit to the end of the url and to access this i have to make a post http post to uh, edit url okay Okay, then when we type like this, oh, this is not working because probably we didn't add um, routing yet. Hmm. Yeah, it is not working. To make it work, we need to add uh, routing and we haven't added yet so let's just stick to our uh, tutorial oh i think i can already edit from our uh, program cs probably i can't remember how was it yeah i can't remember so Let's just, let me just remember it. Oh, here. Why do we, did we need to wrote it?
Mm, let's try. By default, we could also add, but we didn't add the default yet. Uh, this was the way, probably. This is default voting and the view edit was not found. Oh, it is looking for edit CSHTML. Why? Okay, and oh, 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 I remember, I remember. Okay. So, this is uh, index CHHTML, therefore, to access this method, if I remember correctly. I have to write full path like here index and edit or home home edit session let's try home yeah home is working but edit is not why Probably we need to change the default routing. Yeah, I can't remember how was it. Okay, let's just continue to our um Sorry, but I want to, to show you how does this look. Okay. So this is how it looks. Works. So I have to add a roadmap like this. So here in program CS or in startup, we add this and here. Okay. Mm, it is not using MVC roads yet. Therefore, Okay, I have to use, I have to delete this, and now, And we search just enable and controlling false. Uh, 
So I have to, okay, I have revolved it. How it should work, yeah. Anyway, I will just pass it for this time because we will see them in the uh, following. Where will this work? Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, we just yeah. Do not break our application. All things. Hmm, now I can write another one and let's say default to home action will be edit. We won't be taking ID, but we can keep it. Okay, it is working and everything is not working. To make it work home. Okay. Control the hub. Okay, this is not pattern. Controller home action edit. Why well, we have it? But it is expecting view. Ah, I see. It is working, but it is expecting a different view. Uh, because it is different. Therefore, I have to return view with the name of the view as well. So the view name will be index okay now we should work so it was also working previously uh, with our default routing but we didn't return the correct view name yeah now working so uh, I would convert this uh, tag to original and now we should work okay map default controller root so controller home action index so whatever we add it will be by default names uh, searched for I will show you what does 
that mean? So by default, it will be looking for home index equal to this. You see, now I can use home edit and it will be working because it will be looking for uh, edit. And now I can also do a post, uh, but I will show the post method in the Oh, let's do it right now. Uh, okay, um, I'm just, I just need the post. Okay, here, import type submit. Okay, here, here the post. It's so easy. We will we will see all of this in the following lectures with the following uh, tutorial. But I just wanted to make that uh, more um, clear. So let's remove all this. So input type value submit and do, does this have a yeah just. Uh, let's say post example so this will post the home uh, controllers however the action name will be edit okay so the form method will be post and when I uh, post example ah it will expect um, from me an object uh, which object it will expect is basically it will be the value of probably let's check it out so home uh, i mean when i click this product updated with text or oh, text is not posted so, so uh, i need to append the post value so Uh, we were appending the post with we can append it with hidden values I think so not this one. I think I need to append input type value or something like that. Input type, okay, what other types there are? Okay, go to Yeah, let's make it hidden. And but I need a name of input, so I will define the name as, uh, as our text, which is matching uh, the name inside my home controller here. So the value will be our uh, first method action example. Okay. So at the code behind at the server side it will get it so i am going to put a breakpoint here to show you by the way this will only work when we do post when we get it will enter this and it is working already so i will put a breakpoint here to, as well to show you okay then home edit you see it's entering here as expected the side edit method and then you see the title is editing window when i click post okay it is working as our text our first method example and it is working as expected okay so these are about uh, actions and if you return a different name with action it is expecting you to have same name with uh view because of default routing or you can define the return view name uh, so let's also write them uh, and we see controllers 
What are uh, actions in MVC uh, controllers? Uh, how does default routing matches uh, controllers and actions? Uh, action types such as HTTP post and uh, HTTP get after call different actions inside MVC controllers. Okay, okay, I think uh, this is enough uh, for uh, this week. So hopefully see you next week. This is the end of the lecture too. If you have any questions, please ask me from our uh, Discord page. And you can also email me, but Discord is better so other, uh, your friends uh, also can see them. Other students can also see them. And... Alright, end of lecture 2, hopefully see you next week.